So once again, everyone who entered, welcome uh, everyone to our 22nd webinar here at Winter Venture. I'm Ivana, some of you know me, but we do have also new people, which is very exciting. Uh, I've been here for two years to celebrate my second anniversary and fun fact, so did Marcos. Mark, I don't know if you know, but we almost share the same third day, yay for us. Yeah, I got my rakia. You did. What we're not going to talk about the alcohol and the workplace. I'm just kidding. Um, for all of you who are completely new, Interventure is a Swiss Serbian software development company, and we specialize in building and operating fully dedicated all star engineering teams with members such as Marco. And together with our partner, we develop amazing software solutions in a variety of industry and also in a variety of a tech stack for over a decade now. So besides that, we also offer a more fast and flexible project-based collaboration designed to address uh, more temporary engineering workload needs, or if you have some sudden peaks, or you just need a specific expertise in some field. So if you would like to know more about uh, what we do, how we can support you, or if you would like to you know, join us, please feel free to write to me. You should have received my email in the invitation. Uh, but I will write it down in the chat uh, once again. So I really want to say uh, we have the honor to have Marco today um, speaking about Kafka's dreams so with Parkers. Thank you so much, Marco, for taking the time. I think it's going to be a very interesting one because it's not going to just be theory. It's going to be also a little bit of coding, which I'm looking forward to. So I would say I can give you the mic. You can introduce yourself. And then we can uh, get going. And as Marcus said, uh, we can we will have a Q and A uh, at the end. But please feel free also to write in the chat. We will look into it. So please enjoy, Marco. Thanks, Stan. I will take it over from here. And <clears throat> uh, first of all, I will introduce myself because later on we're gonna be moving at a relatively rapid pace. So most of the questions we'll try to set up for the ten minutes before seven o'clock, just to get all the juicy stuff going. Uh, okay, for me, you already see my name, Marko Kovacic. I've been working uh, with uh, backend mostly in a variety of languages because I kind of like being in the backend uh, part of the system, just increasing the throughput latency and the concurrency of the flow of data that's going on. I, of course, had experience with front end development, but backend is kind of my domain. I've worked before, for starters, with PHP, uh, Node.js, though currently still with Node, uh, with Java, uh, Go, and a tiny bit of Kotlin to just try it out a little bit, just to uh, compare up the languages, their ecosystems, and see how well they fare, especially in the world when we have a ton of data going really fast and services on the cloud which need to handle, well, a huge number of concurrent requests at the same time. Uh, this uh, presentation will focus on the Kafka streams with Quarkus. Uh, we'll um, introduce Kafka at least for the others who haven't worked or heard with it, just some minor introductory, and then talk a little bit why I chose Quarkus uh, for this example. You just click left, perfect. Okay, so Ivana said there won't be any alcohol, but I'm sorry to disappoint. We'll be as a software engineers. What else are we gonna do but build systems around beer? And this is some sort of a quick overview how we're gonna go with it. Uh, we go first uh, a little bit fast with Kafka. What's it about? Why Quarkus? Then the next three will be uh, showcases directly. We'll show off how um, you can set up really quickly. Kafka with Quarkus do some in initial uh, uh, data sending, processing, and then we'll get to the main parts, which are the Kafka stream specific. And not to be confused, Kafka streams is actually uh, referred to the library for making uh, declaratively the, the declaratively uh, stating how our processing streams will work. And two important ones are the stateless and the stateful processing ones. Those will be the most important ones that you need to focus on this whole uh, presentation section. So, to get on with it. Kafka, uh, quick intro for those who maybe have worked before with Redis PubSub, RevitMQ with its AMQP protocol for sending out, dishing out events, uh, maybe done some uh, micro-batching. 
uh, Kafka is a stream platform, meaning it doesn't do batches, it literally does event by event to get the highest throughput and even latency. And what's uh, most important is, let me show you, hopefully I share the whole screen, you should see paint. Uh, events that we send in Kafka, they are called records. They are sent uh, through with the standard key and the data is binary, zero and ones. And how Kafka writes data, it writes so in a sequential manner. So it goes from one, two, three, four, etc. All, all in that uh, sequential ma manner because this will give it a huge throughput due to disk writes because it's gonna be literally appending to the log. And the events it gets, unlike let's say a RabbitMQ which consumes the, uh, the job from the queue, then it's gone. In Kafka, it stays within the log, depending how long is the retention period, it just stays there. But it, uh, the offset is what it moves, so it processes one, finishes, moves to the second, and so on. Important bit is it cannot uh, uh, do this without an order. So it can't take, let's say, four of these events and then say uh, three was a success and maybe uh, one was a success but these two weren't leave them there no it needs to move by an offset so it needs really to uh, honor the direction of processing and how it also achieves parallelism is uh, in uh, let's call it in every time queue we say we have a queue in Kafka, there is a different uh, name for that. Let's call it like that. Uh, it's uh, called topic, where it's sent. It can be uh, if some event happened, user created, let's it, let's it be like that. And if we want to process it, it will all go through the... We'll have one consumer that will literally digest uh, this whole topic. And we can't uh, have higher concurrency than this one. It will need to go one by one, that's that. How we do achieve uh, concurrency with this is with the use of partitions. Partitions basically split it like you would split a pizza. Let's say if you're one guy, you can obviously the whole thing if you're capable of it. Uh, if we would, let's say, declare three slices, one guy would eat all of them. If we have a second guy, delete one. If we no, not undo, redo. If we had a second guy, he would also eat that slice, but still someone needs to eat the other slice. And if we had three guys, all the slices would get spread uh, through even uh, consumers. But the problem is if we get more consumers than we have partitions, then the fourth one doesn't have a slice of its own. These guys already took their free slices. So that's one of, one of the ways and uh, with this approach uh, you don't have a queuing style, it's not, not a queue. If there is one guy eating from it, he will go, uh, uh, this will act as a queue and he will eat it in order. Uh, in some scenarios you can achieve uh, queuing with parallelism based on the usage that you have. And usage would be, for example, click delete, if you are having this topic of order events, let's say order was uh, created. And in this queue, uh, where do you need queuing is when you have users, uh, when you want to queue based on a user. So that's where you would use keys. Let's say this um, doesn't need to be a specific number because based on the user's ID, the user number, let's say uh, uh, 52, will always, all of his or orders will end up in uh, this partition by, while the user 100, let's say, will go to the partition number 3. So based on the key, it will always be directed to the same queue. And that way you will have ordering and parallelism at the same time. Uh, and Kafka can have up to two to four uh, thousand of partitions on the cluster. And cluster usually consists of multiple topics. So you can have, of course, many to topics or queues, let's call them whatever is easier uh, for you in a single Kafka cluster. And a Kafka cluster usually has at least three uh, brokers. 
just to have the scalability, resilience, fault tolerance and all the good stuff that I'm talking about. So that's a little bit for Kafka. Uh, back pressure, of course, that's an important bit because everything that's pushed to Kafka, it's not forcefully fed to the consumers. The con consumers pull the data in how often and how much they want based on their own uh, configuration. And because Kafka is um, immutable log, uh, the whole system can be replayed because let's say our system consumes a ton of messages from their ten, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and based on that calculates, aggregates some sort of data. If something fails, if the system fails, it can again do that from the start because the messages still exist in Kafka. You just need to uh, change the offset to again uh, reset it and start from the start to consume all of it. And this stuff will come out later for uh, string processing. Okay, a little bit on Quarkus. Uh, why I chose that? Quarkus is a modern Java framework and I choose it specifically for uh, this because productivity for me it's still amazing uh, what uh, you can achieve with this one and documentation is par excellence compared to some other frameworks where I need to google like crazy just to find out some basic stuff that the library should immediately tell uh, what's the configuration, how to use it and some uh, advanced examples. Because it's modern, uh, it's built uh, to be cloud friendly, container first. So native compilation is uh, really uh, easy. It's in, in the box, baked, baked right in. So you shouldn't have any problems uh, setting Java to be compiled natively. It unifies a reactive because it has Netty and Vertex under the hood and it allows a really good combination when you want to uh, switch from the classical thread model to the reactive one and back again. Uh, it's based on standards, so it's following, its uh, idea is to use um, a lot of hardened uh, libraries maintained by third party and uh, standardized across the whole field with the toolings and just to have you configure what you need and have it run immediately. Uh, yeah, high productivity, I mentioned that, and excellent documentation. Just to show it out a little bit, a uh, month and a half, I think, Quarkus version 3 was launched, all the better, we can try it now and see how it fares. And this is kind of the stuff I already mentioned, and you'll, you'll see the documentation, how it looks like, because I'm going to reference it a lot. Okay, let's start with the interesting uh, stuff. Quarkus, hello world. Uh, and yeah, it's called beer streaming. So I've maybe first to show you how I how you start with. It's similar to how you start with string. Uh, with Spring, you go into the start coding. I think it's called. Select all the stuff that you need. REST reactive, REST reactive JSON. Uh, Kafka, small array reactive messaging, uh, Kafka streams for depending on the app we are building. I got a couple of them and open ID, oh not open ID, sorry, open API. I'll show you what I already got and, and health checks just to show that off. The thing is, I already did set up of these um, four applications, downloaded them because of the Maven setup, IntelliJ annoyances and annoying stuff like that, so we don't get anything wrong or not working. Okay, we'll go through it uh, rather quickly. So this one is just a Kafka Hello one and how it looks like. We usually have, uh, have some stuff prepared to save a little bit time. Uh, beer DTO, create beer DTO to see how it looks like and we'll be doing things like this. We also see how fast we can write stuff. So just a simple one for people here. Yeah. Or, or I think I use this service. So classical as spring, we have the pants injection. It's really nice and smooth going. Just uh, create beer from beer. Okay, 
Okay, uh, now with the Kafka, uh, we'll just, what are we going to do roughly here? Uh, we're planning just to create a beer, send it out to a Kafka topic, uh, consume it from that one, send it to another one and print it out somewhere. And if we get some time to show server-side events. Uh, basically how would you go, would we just declare a channel where we want to send the data. And this is uh, interesting, this is the, something that comes from uh, Quarkus itself. Because it's event-based, it has uh, a notion of channels, but these channels can be any type of uh, messaging protocol. So by default, what you have here is, uh, if we don't declare anything, this will just go through vertex event bus, like asynchronously somewhere, handled by the workers and returned. So we'd have create beers, we would send the beer, beer, beer emitter. If you see bear somewhere, let me know. Uh, create a beer, we are sending. And this one is just, let's see how fast I can write, otherwise I'll just start copying a little bit of data. Counter, get an increment just to have something to follow. Beer name, beer percentage, and price. Something like that. And ta -ta -ta -ta. just check, double check on the time. Okay, I'll speed this up a little bit. And this is this. Wait. Speed this one a little bit just to save the time for the important ones and to show it off how it works. Uh, because uh, writing code is a lot of physical work. But basically, the same thing I mentioned we are just creating a beer, sending it over uh, to the Let's move it here. We are sending it through the emitter. Uh, that one that's called create peers. And then we just add annotations on the function where we want to have the consumer. Uh, this guy consume from that specific channel and or topic. And then send out to the peers updated uh, topic. And let me start these. Uh, just copy the resource handler. So this one is just for creating. This one is a bit interesting. Uh, this one is for server-side events. But if you haven't worked for that, this is a really nice way of getting the events back in the real time. Where we also well, inject it and subscribe to the Beers Improved channel. Uh, we uh, add a notation for the method that this is going to be server sent, sent an event, so it's constantly uh, listening for the incoming data from it. And maybe, maybe, and the presentation model will be smarter to make it a bit easier to view, but better late than ever. And but the important part, I'll zoom it a little bit, is with the configuration. So when I mentioned that. Uh, this channel can be any type of data transfer, MQP, MQTT, PubSub, or just the Vertex is one. We need to tell it because it has no idea it needs to send this to Kafka. But the configuration is rather simple. And I'll describe all these minor ones. So, uh, we need to specify this, this is the first part. It's messaging and we need to say, is it outgoing or incoming? Are we sending or receiving it? What is the name of the channel and which connector to use? And this is where we say to it uh, specifically use Kafka. Now we have, uh, we then say, uh, if we don't say what topic we want uh, it to be, it will use the create beer as one. But I want to say that it's a different topic because I got multiple other ones in the, in the same application and it needs to know, uh, so there's no name collision, which one is which one. This uh, information is also okay or not okay for this scenario. It's, this means it will 
the producer can produce the data and the consumer can come later on and without this it will consume the data that arrived when the consumer got attached if you set it the offset to the earliest one then the consumer will start from the events that were well from the start not when it got connected so you can follow it up and a good thing with Quartus, Quartus is uh, if you have downloaded Kafka or some dependencies like that and have the configuration set up, it will automatically pull the, all the needed uh, dependencies, meaning containers. So it will download Kafka, just let me uh, hit run, go away, zoom screen, Kafka, hello. Where did you go? Okay. Because I want to show off a little bit uh, in uh, what Parkus can uh, show you uh, on the dev UI that it has, because it's really powerful for uh, fast development. Now you can see that it uh, started pulling containers, and for Kafka it uses a red, a red panda. Now red pan panda is C++ implementation of the Kafka protocol, and it's uh, really fast to start up and small to download, so it's really good for the development environment. And you'll do the same thing that you'll get with the real Kafka. So it started on the port 8018. You can visit the dev UI. This is the new shiny one from the 3.0. Though it uh, doesn't show something, so we'll have to go back. It has the health UI because of the added uh, for the health, health check library. But it can show that what was started, what's the readiness check, liveness check, uh, even the JSON that it returns for showing it. And ta -ta -ta -ta, we have the Swagger UI for sending the beers, which we'll get to in a moment. Go back. I want to show you uh, to switch first to the previous version of the UI because they haven't ported any, uh, everything. For example, Kafka UI is something that's missing. And you can see here it's showing the topics that we have, number of messages is zero. We have consumer groups, we have this one, to show the names of the consumers. And let me just try sending the messages that we at. So I get you, I post a beer. I need to try and name. I think it's a bit more powerful in a steeper price. Okay, so it sends it successfully and all this C is generated automatically uh, the open API by Quarkus, which is amazing because it's really fast to get it up and running and test it out. And as you can see, we got, come on, you can do it. We got the beer in that one. Let me just show it again, where it goes through. So creating, it, we are sending it create beers uh, based on this configuration to the beers topic and then in this function we consume the beers and send it out to the beers updated if I haven't changed it yeah it's the beers updated not beers and you'll see the same thing yeah improves hop to pod of course and ta -ta -ta. Uh, there is also server-side events, but let me show it through here. Uh, it's all beers. Put like this. And if I didn't mess anything up, you should be able to see the... Yeah, you can see then live when the events are coming through the server-side events, which is also really nice for anything uh, front-end related where you need the real time uh, to receive data. Okay, let me double check uh, something worth mentioning. Uh, let's just finish up with the Kafka Hello one. So this one is a, just a simple example, and also just to mention, uh, all this talk we are going looking at the top uh, level picture of this whole thing because going in details about everything, especially fault to tolerance, this is a really massive. Um, uh, how, how to call it? Well, Kafka is a beast. In, it's a massive field to talk about. So let's start with the basic ones from the top. 
Okay, we killed this one, and yeah, I forgot to say, it also has a lot of cool things, this WI, which I don't have time to show off. Okay, then I think based on the presentation, we are next, ne uh, next on the stateless processing demo. Now, what are we gonna build with this one? Don't say. So, uh, we have two important uh, fields, so it's state, uh, stateless and stateful processing. We'll start with the easier one, that's the stateless, so nothing is stored in memory database, everything is, as, as it comes, it gets handled and off it goes. For uh, the next one, I, uh, there's one app that I already built that we won't spend time with, that just produces drinks. So, we we'll, won't have only beers, we'll have, I don't know, cocktails, wines, uh, but whatever you can imagine they have time to write <laughs> and we are going to build this uh, peer processor <coughs> that's gonna process all this data in the real time as it comes out and what's it gonna do uh, first thing it's gonna filter out all the drinks so we are only interested in beers uh, then based on that it, we will do some branching because sadly we uh, not all drinks or well beers will have a rating. I mean, for some strange reason, want to sh have all drinks with a rating. So we'll figure out on our own, probably by random, what this uh, rating is. And uh, this branching step will branch based on does the beer have a rating? So this is R for. Uh, rated beer and if it does not we will create an unrated stream then add a rating to the beer add rating if you can remember all of these uh, oh, perfect and then when it's done we're gonna merge these two streams into one back again then we'll do some enrichment to again improve the beer as we did before and send it off to uh how is it called beers rated topic so that's roughly what we are doing so there is no state and important bit to mention when uh we'll do this with kafka streams and this is called a, a topology when an event comes into this topology let's say we got one event and it, first, yeah, it's at the filter, it passes filter, it gets to the merge part, and enrichment part. There cannot exist two events in this flow at the same time. So you can't have two or three while the others are still going through the flow. Only one can be within the flow until it gets out, either filtered out or goes to the other topic nothing else can uh, enter it. So it will also help you with uh, imagining all of this what's going on. Okay, let's see how that looks like, the beer streaming. Just to show a little bit on the producer, really fast. So, okay, we zoom. We just will have a list of cities. Uh, cities will be needed for the first, for the third part where we are going to do uh, stateful but basically it will when the application is started these cities will be emitted into a cities topic and just sit there now we have beer names we have list of drink drink names and these uh, two that output those so this one for the cities just outputs it uh, once but the other one drinks while well, it's gonna tick every 500 milliseconds and Love whenever it produces a drink, it will send it out to the drinks uh, topic. And then we'll do all our nice things. Now let's look at the processor that we are building the, and the time. Uh, okay, so we got the things we need here. We have a drink, we have a rating service. And of course it's a smart one, it just gives a random value. Now. And for those, application scope is like a component uh, or like a singleton in Spring, just for Quarkus. And a good thing is, uh, for native, it's really easy to add um, 
to allow certain things which are hard to detect, to detect for building natively just by adding annotation and register for reflection. And for the most of the stuff that you are sending to and receiving from Kafka, you just need to add this uh, annotation and you're good to go to build it for natively. Now, finally, we're gonna use Kafka streams and uh, see how it looks like. Be before that, all of this was just Kafka interacting with it. So this one will be uh, stateless topology application scope produces. Okay, this is the correct one. And we're gonna build the topology. This produces is like a bin in Spring. Basically, this is annotation that tells we are gonna provide you with this topology through this builder method. And we are going to use the rating service to in inject it. Because we're gonna, of course, use it to calculate later on. So what do we need to do? We need to uh, filter beers only, it's easier always right like this. Uh, branch or split based if no rating, then merge and enrich, and then we split, we split into unrated and uh, default rated uh, streams. So we always start with the streams builder. But we are going to return, but the important bit is what's uh, inside. Uh, but to mention on the producer one that's going to produce all these drinks, the key that's going to be used and it's important for well sending the data that's going to be partitioned later on is and uh, referenced is the city ID. So the ID of the drinks that's going to be coming is going to be the ID of the cities that will help us later on on ag aggregation. Uh, okay, so first we'll be reading from the builder stream, which stream we want to read from. It's the drinks. I have to check later on if I didn't mess up the names. And uh, we consume from the drinks, always we specify key and the value. And what this requires, set uh, integer, is uh, how do we want to serialize, deserialize that. As I said, we did get this as bytes. And we need to know to what do we convert it, what uh, do we expect. So it's by city ID, which is an integer. So we first consume with the key as an integer. And the second uh, is a drink. So we need to build a deserializer for that one. And we do it like this. Drink set there. That one. Perfect filter, then always key that's autocomplete. That the value is the drink where the ta -ta -ta type equals beer. Now, the next part uh, so this when it gets something that's not beer, it's gonna acknowledge it and continue later on until it finds a beer and then send it to the next one. Then we do a split if I'm not. Me. Mistaken, uh, I think it's called split, 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 branched as. Uh, just remember if I messed up the naming. Branched as. Because I forget these things constantly. Processor. What does it accept? Let me just check. Branched as name. Ah. Don't look. Named as, not branched as. Named as, and this is uh, drinks branched, let's call it like that. Doesn't necessarily need to be, can be whatever. Now we have a branch. How, how do we branch uh, this stuff? Uh, uh, come on. The value again is uh, the drink, but just to make things consi consistent, I'm writing it like this. Uh, where the rating it is now. And which one is the second value? Branched as uh, unrated. And of course, the default branch is going to be branch as rated. 
and this one will build us a map that's gonna be a, let's call a string and this can tell us just hide this first default branch returns a map string key string integer drink okay branch map Last should be good to go. So uh, we have those branches inside of the map, so we need to, pu to pull them and to do specific stuff with them. Let's first get branch map get drinks branch dash unrated. So this split is helpful for declaring those to be specific especially if you have multiple of them. So it will have, uh, it will append the prefix to the branch that we branched off. And this is drinks branch to unrated. And these unrated ones will want to uh, add a value, well, add a rating. So new drink. So hopefully I have a little bit of time. Okay, this part I'll copy to get in time for the important part, part because this is mostly physical work. So, uh, first this thing, how it looks like. Branches. Uh, we take the first branch, we map the values. Basically, we, uh, that dream that didn't have a rating We'll just create a new one and add it the new rating we did calculate. We'll just add a logger really, really fast. And then we'll need another one. The second one doesn't do anything special, but we need to merge them. So second one will be a rating stream and drinks branch. We'll just check on the naming. No rating like this. This one is rated drinks branch. No rating drinks branch rated. Okay. And this one we just merged the no rating uh, stream. And, and so, okay, these two are merged then we need to output to where it goes just show so we did the merging all of them will go there we just want to i don't know improve the beer a little bit just add some naming before we send it out to another topic because that's two parties for sending to the topic and i just want to add the map the map map values that basically uh, takes that drink and changes it and returns another drink which will, have, which will have the improved added to it. And then we'll send it out to uh, beers rated, I think I called it. And uh, um, let's call this one. We need to tell it uh, what are we sending, with which key and which uh, serialization technique I'll be use, we'll, we'll be using. So we want to maintain the same key that was the city and we want to use the Drink, uh, what, what, is it the drink set then? Did I miss something? Okay, stream required to drink set the thing. Blind. I've, no, because it doesn't return anything, that, that's why it annoys me. And we did, so uh, I'll just run through it really quickly. Uh, we filter out, we only look for the beers, we then do splitting of the uh, of the streams into two streams, the rated and the unrated one. Uh, this is the first branch where we set the rule. Uh, everything that has a value of rating null goes into this branch. This is a uh, suffix for it. Every, everything else goes to the default rated branch. So we got uh, the map of those branches. Then we get the first one that doesn't have a rating, map values, add that rating to it. Uh, we take the second one and say merge it with the no rating, well, the updated no rating stream one. 
and all those merged will enrich them with an improved uh, drink name to it and send it out to the other topic and because I maybe messed up with the strings and it's because it's extremely easy to do so I'll just copy the entire thing and hope for the best drinks topic because we don't want to spend time for me finding bugs in strings Okay, all should be good to go, and that's a little, little bit of that. that. So this application has just this uh, stateless topology that produces topology, rating service for random, drink, and that's that. And let's start first with the Gavazum, with the producer. Now this one will start dishing out the data, um, just ra random drinks out, and we'll be able to see it through uh, console log. Okay, that's the first one. Then we start with this processor. And what's interesting, Kafka Streams also has a nice topology overview in the Quarkus Dev UI. Okay, state started from creating to starting. And it also looks at uh, when it adds missing values. So when it catches uh, in a stream some uh, drink uh, beer that doesn't have a rating, it will add to it, log it out, and say how much it added to it. So it's working, working thing out. Uh, let me just check what's the port for that one. So the beer processor is 8019. Let's go on it. Well, the help UI, you can see from it uh, working, it was okay, but, but, but. Let's go to the previous version UI because I want to access the topology. It will also generate, generate you the topology so you can see all, all the topologies or the one that you have, how it looks like, how the stream is going and where it's going. So we got all the uh, filter, we are branching, the name of the branches, map values, merge, map and output to another one. And if we go to Kafka UI, there we have all of them. So the cities, they were outputted once. That's that for them. Nothing special. We don't want to change them. It's just some data that's not being updated regularly, uh, which is important for later on. Uh, beers rated. Let's just see this one quickly. And so Ivana will help the delay a little bit, the, the final words. But everything is getting here. There's the improved rating. We got the rating on, on it and all looks good. Now let's go to the uh, next section. This one is the well, stateful processing. Just one slide to show where we are at. Okay, for, let me just kill these, stop all. Uh, the next one, I'll sh copy a little bit of data to make it a little bit faster. Uh, but what do we want to, to do with this one? So, uh, in the previous one we didn't store anything anywhere, in this one we want to store things and this is, I think, maybe the most important bit, bits, a bit why we want to use Kafka uh, streaming, where you want to aggregate the real-time data as it comes to produce calculated value over, over a period of time or immediately. So, we'll be getting uh, these beers that we uh, rated and... Oh, do I need to draw this or uh, maybe it's better to explain. Uh, we'll join the beers that we get with the cities and we'll map it to uh, where was this beer consumed in which city and create a map where the key is the city and the drinks that were consumed and accounted to those drinks. So let's say uh, Marrakesh has a list of drinks and I hope the poll was consumed uh, five times and it's real time. So when it gets the data, it will update it immediately that you can see how many beers were of which type consumed in that location. And I was also interested into writing this one down, but it has a little bit more, especially with the story and I'm more in keen to show you how it looks like. So. It's not complicated, but let's see. Kafka Streams Topology. Uh, let's 
see if you have duplication and then I'll go for it. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I constantly forget to put it up. So, okay, uh, what's a bit different with this one? So again, we uh, have the string builder that we are using. Uh, these are serialization and deserialization. So we want to handle uh, converting to drink and city back and forth. And there's a new class uh, that's called aggregation. So maybe I'll show that one first. So uh, when we... Uh, mm -mm -mm, get the data, we'll accumulate them. Uh, if you remember when I mentioned partitions, uh, we use the key as a city ID. So everything is already set up by a uh, city. And the idea is to uh, group it by cities. And uh, to store it, we'll need, we'll use this class. It's gonna basically be for each of those cities, there'll be a, a, an aggregation class. And as the data comes, for that city, that aggregation class will be constantly, constantly updated. So sequentially, stuff get, uh, comes up, stuff gets updated uh, in a mutable way to this aggregation class. So it has the city ID and city name so that we know uh, where it's from and has this hash map. And for every event uh, that comes, which is partitioned by the city ID, for that city, we will update uh, this aggregation object. We'll just uh, increment the uh, appear count. So get from the map that city or create one if it doesn't exist and increment it by one. That's that. And we are doing it for all of the city types. Now, uh, we are going still to use the store. This is where the state comes in, uh, but, but, but maybe to start with the builder. So we consume from the beers rated previous string. We say how we ser uh, deserialize it. And this is the important bit, uh, how we join the data. We are using a global uh, table. And what's important to note is a globe, there are partitioned and global uh, tables. Globals should uh, be used uh, with the state, uh, static data and a really small amount of it just to be able to efficiently handle it. And the cities, they don't change, uh, well, very often. And that makes it very easy to make the join. And how we do it, we set, okay, join with this table, join by city ID, and uh, drink and city, this is basically a tuple. It will just take the both city and the drink, so from both topics, and put it into one object, so it's a bit easier to transfer. It's gonna group it by key, so it's gonna group it uh, Marrakesh, Belgrade, Hamburg, and so on. And for each of those cities, it will have the ag uh, aggregation object. And similar to reduce, for example, if you uh, worked with it, uh, it's gonna reuse that one to constantly, whenever the new data comes, it's gonna update that one object. And this third argument is how to store it into the store supplier. This is again, it says a materialized this store, and this is just the serialization, serialization uh, declaration. Most of the code you see is, just tells it how to serialize and deserialize. And that's that. It later on uh, converts it back to a string to output somewhere else into an aggregated topic. And. Uh, that's that, uh, well, for that stream, uh, but also one uh, important bit is uh, you can query this data. So you, you can literally create uh, 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 an interactive store because why are we storing this data if we are not going to query it? Uh, uh, double check. And how do it? We just need to inject Kafka streams. Uh, we need to specify stream store. We need to say uh, what's the name of the store that we uh, created here and say it's a key value store. And then when you ch uh, uh, check it, this is a little bit of a hack for uh, local development. It's basically gonna uh, get from the store. This is the important bit. Get from the store uh, by the city ID. As we said, we are using the city keys. And this is a little trick to, when the store is not ready, it's going to throw this exception. And we're going to just constantly wait to it be ready to get the data. This is just for the uh, 
temporary setup and for showcases. And, and, and then we can just use the HTTP uh, endpoint to create for that to just get data for that city. And let me run it really quickly. Let's so take a drink and let some data through. Uh, ah, I can kill the other ones. Quick start producer and processor. And hopefully, we'll get some data. Okay, processor is up. Sometimes it takes a little bit time, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit and restart it. Because there's a lot of development setup stuff and things happening automatically, where you don't need to configure anything, it figures out on the go and starts everything. And just see, okay, this one is working, this one is processing, I guess. I don't trust you, we start again. Because I want to show you uh, along with this part just to fetch a retrieve from the store. Uh, but the aggregator one takes a little bit to start up because of the internal state. I'm kind of looking for the fastest way just to get it up and running properly. But when this one is finished, I'll just show exit one command. Uh, this is also compiled. Yeah. Created to starting uh, 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 from partitions aside to running because there's partition, there's reassignment, there's everything happening everywhere all at once. Okay, let's just do the final checkup. Health UI, thank God everything is healthy on the aggregator. Uh, 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 Swagger UI. So if you remember, it, I got IDs for the cities and we can try and get some data. And we can get from that city how much uh, beers did it get processed and how many in which city, it, uh, yeah, how many in that city got. And if you update it, now this is a little bit slower, but eventually some of the values would change. And if you try it for a different city, then you'd get uh, different uh, values in it. And again, this we can see the, the topology for this one. Where we can see the bills rated, uh, the cities, the joint happening, the uh, sto state store uh, that's happening. And then, and just important to mention, uh, there's the bill aggregated, uh, long name. There's this topic that got created. Uh, what Kafka with the state uh, 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 stateful processing does is uh, when I said if the application crashes, it can always uh, reread everything from the Kafka topic and get the state up and running. Uh, but it can be really costly if there's millions of amounts of data. And uh, this store, it's using a technique that's called change uh, that data capture if I haven't messed it up. Which means, uh, let, let's say if we have the same user and if the name got updated for that uh, same user three times, we will just use the last update. We don't care about the other ones. So if there were like 4 million uh, updates for a user to that table, we only care about the last updates, the last state. And with the change data capture mode from, let's say, 4 million, of you, 4 million user events, you can fall down to 1 million uh, user events and you can uh, speed things up quite a bit. Uh, also, there's, it's a huge topic, you can use different uh, types of stores. Usually it's devised just to use, uh, use a simple store can, like a database. Uh, because most of the time you won't be uh, needing that fast performance and it's easier to start with it. And later on when you find that you're having really slow latency, then you can start thinking about in-memory RocksDB, which is by default, we are using, for example, RocksDB uh, in this uh, scenario, and then optimize on that one. But last note for this one is to mention, uh, uh, what's it called? No, 
things is horizontal scaling. So what you saw this is running on one instance of uh, a Kafka application, one consumer, this aggregator where we have state. But what if you wanted to scale? That means that you'll have more of them and the data will get partitioned. So if you request one city from the first uh, Kafka aggregator, it might not have it because everything is partitioned. But you, it can return your information where it's located. So it can say, okay, the city data is not with me, but is with this one, with the third or the, the fourth. And uh, the documentation on Quarkus is really amazing, uh, especially if you have uh, developers that didn't uh, try to get started with it. They have everything literally uh, written down on how to do. And this is a similar example on what it does, but I want to show you just a bit and we'll, done, we'll be done. And uh, where is it? What is it? Oh, scaling. scaling out, where it does this thing I explained. And it's not too much of a setup. Basically, the well, the, there's metadata retrieval that allows you from that store uh, to retrieve information on the host. And then you return it. Uh, through HTTP uh, 302 or redirect to go to that specific uh, application that holds that data in order to scale out. And of course, it won't be Quarkus if I didn't show that uh, everything can be done uh, is compiled natively. So I did it with uh, Quarkus, uh, what's it called? Uh, bi uh, binary that helps a lot for building this stuff and uh, managed to create all three of, of, of these into natively compiled. And the thing is, it takes quite a bit of time or I, or I already did create it. Because I had some strange issues. And you can see here, it created all, all of these uh, instances that we talked about, producer, it's producing, sending this data, uh, and what's important is the images are extremely small. It's around 100 megabytes. It can be even lower if you adjust configuration, it can be, I think, even a fi a 50 megabytes of the running image, which is extremely nicely for the uh, cloud environment. And uh, yeah, uh, regarding GraalVR compilation, uh, this is compiled to Linux. Usually you can't compile on, on the, let's say, Windows OS to Linux. You need to have an intermediary uh, image to do that. And uh, again, Quarkus has amazing documentation for even things like that. You go native, building native executable. Uh, it has a ton of stuff for all the needs that you need and you basically just execute one command and you're done too. And Kafka uh, documentation is really, really extensive. And I like that you have everything on the same page. Okay, and just the, to go back to finalize a little bit of this and wrap it up. Uh, use cases, uh, you can have it well in most places, wherever you need in real time uh, to process a incoming stream of uh, data from the financial, uh, data processing, sports broadcasting, uh, email delivery from MailChimp, I didn't know they had it, but then it goes, uh, even Slack. Uh, and always consider Kafka, it's a really beast to maintain. Uh, really uh, see if you have a scenario where you need uh, really data in real time processed extremely fast and to aggregate it to produce some uh, real time results because it needs to have minimal latency. One mention is uh, what you saw for the Kafka streams, that was Java library for declaratively building. The next step is uh, KSQL DB, which is uh, literally open source event streaming database where you can, uh, like you would create a table or execute a query, you'd create a table or a stream uh, from, uh, like I did, but through SQL commands and then query the data, model it, do whatever you want but the database will do all of this uh, that I showed you, especially with the scale. Oops. 
And there's also, let me check, yeah, there's also some really good references if you want to get started with Kafka. So look into uh, these two books, they're really amazing. And as always, there's Confluent documentation. It has ton, tons of examples if you want to, to retry. Uh, add retry log logic, uh, the letter queues in the potency, all the good stuff. And Apache Kafka Streams is always kind of up to date with all the things that you need. So yeah, I kind of speed it up a little bit at the end, but kind of made it. If there's still anyone alive or any questions, we can, we can hit them now. We are alive, don't you worry. So thank you so much. But yes, um, I'm looking at the chat. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to write them down. Otherwise, of course, we will also share the recording of this video. And I will also share with you my email. So if afterwards something comes up, you can also always write. And what I'm going to do now is because you have some recommendation, I will definitely post it now also into the chat so you can copy it. And I'll send, uh, I guess, it through emails or some other media, and the uh, repository to the code base you have for all of this, make it a bit easier. But also, yeah, t uh, take a note that the Quarkus documentation is extensive. Some of the things did, uh, didn't update lately, so you'll have, probably have to watch it again on some parts to catch up, but should be good to go. Okay, so maybe you... I'm not sure they can see us, so maybe you want to stop uh, sharing. I'm going to Zoom so we can see us. Anyway. <laughs> so I can stop. I, so I should stop the share, right? No, no, you can. You can uh, because currently we only see, I think, your screen. It's also nice to see your lovely face in that sense. But let us just wait if someone has any questions um, for us or you, they want to rewind, go through something else. So we can wait a minute if someone has a reason or something. Yeah, basically, if you don't even know much about Java, you can just start from here and Google all the things you need because they have really good documentation, even for the uh, setting up everything, even uh, what's, it, what's it called, uh, tracing is also easy, Revit MQ, uh, collecting metrics, there's a ton of uh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Marco, by the way. Okay. Uh, you have inspired me, so uh, obviously I'm not drinking while working, but I will definitely grab a beer from our fridge here at the venture. So. Yeah, the presentation makes you thirsty. Exactly. Uh, I do have to admit I'm a wine girl, but okay, that's a different topic on that sense. But we're still waiting for someone, if someone has maybe a question. As I said, we are recording this, so we are definitely... Yeah, this is a general overview. If you want to ask just some even uh, the basic questions, the whole idea is just to present it and to get an idea of what the streams are about and what's Kafka used about. And that's the stateless and stateful processing. That's the key topic. And as I said, I mean, uh, we will share the video, so maybe something afterwards will pop up or some of you guys are working ah, there's the page. <laughs> or some of you are working currently on a project with Quarkus. So uh, definitely we're also open for questions afterwards. But if this is it, I would say we can conclude it. Also, you guys know where to find me, so. Uh, Milos gave you some, we can go to chat, so Milos just wrote Ah, oh, thanks, Milos. So, really nice work, Marco, as you said. Uh, quite interesting to not just have a presentation. Yeah, it didn't crash, I was happy. <laughs> yeah, listen, we were prepared for a lot of things. We at the Twitch like be prepared. But, we were prepared um, enough. Yeah, I think it's very interesting that you, you know, sharing some knowledge through also coding and showing us all the documentation and everything and not just presenting some some slides. So I think that, and also I like the, the example. I, I, I was looking for the beer jokes, but didn't get the time to prepare. It would take too much. Yeah, next time we'll write it down and then in the chat. But um, as I said, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, and also uh, looking forward to future webinars here at the venture. But uh, I would say there are a lot of compliments and I 
better you're going to become even more. Thanks, guys. That's very thankful, uh, very helpful. I agree, although I'm not fluent in Kafka, but uh, definitely something we we uh, enjoyed listening to. And uh, once again, Marco, we really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And uh, if there's anything else, guys, that you would like to share, um, I will write down my email address and then. Communicate, but as for now, I would say this was very successful. This was great. Wow. So thank you so much, Mark. Once again, looking forward to maybe another set of webinar in the future, maybe elaborate more on this topic. But as for now, thank you everyone who stayed until the end and then stay tuned for the next webinar. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone, and adios. Bye bye.